And with that, folks, we're in. Hello and welcome to Game 2 between Team Liquid and CIS Rejects on this Stall Out of I-League Stall Series se Season 13 coverage. Once again, I'm Loma Down Under. I'm going to be joined by Scant. I feel like we both think that it really... I mean, the draft actually seemed pretty even. It just came down to a few key team fights. Yeah, I think it came down a few, to a few key team fights, and the the key Ten team fights to a large extent came down to a lack of uh, utility or control factors for Five CIS rejects, which remaining. not necessarily about the picks as much as about the the item choices as well. Um, we both time. agreed that Iceberg is probably important in determining if his team wins the game or not, and we were kind of saying in an unnuanced way, you know, if he gets strong, they'll probably win. If he doesn't, they'll probably lose. And I think what we, we discovered from the previous game to nuance the analysis a bit more is that. Iceberg is probably a necessary condition for his team to win, but not a sufficient one. So even when he has the big game and gets really strong early on, you need those elements of, of support, control, utility coming out of his teammates as well. And I don't think, I think that's probably always the case. It's very rare, except maybe with heroes like Ember Spirit, that just one hero with lots of damage is, is enough to do everything. And he, even in those cases, I feel like there's just all these unsung heroes we don't talk about. It's 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 usually some kind of team effort, and even when your carry player gets everything they want, that's that's not going to be enough on so. Additionally, it was a really rough game because it wasn't one of those, uh, as you mentioned, with heroes like Ember Spirit, sometimes you can kind of stand on the edge of the fight. Shadowfee not so able to do that. Additionally, he had a BKB, but there was Winter's Curse, Clockwork Hookshot, and something else that I am forgetting that went through BKB in that team fight, in those team fights. So it wasn't an... E and Doom. The, the Doom? Yeah, the Doom. I mean, it, it wasn't an easy way, especially, as you mentioned, without extra control Radiant to be a Shadow team. Fiend. But we have got some different bands coming out. Still the Lena, Team Liquid not wanting to play into one of Iceberg's signature heroes, which then gives CIS Reject the Doom. I think the rest of it looked pretty normal. If you know a team runs the Wisp and you can't pick it up yourself, you get rid of it. But, again, Shadow Fiend Slaughter on the deck, and... Obviously a hero that I'm sure Varda is well versed in. Yeah, definitely. So I wonder what they're actually thinking about at this point, because I'd be shocked if they don't pick one of the two, Sharafino Slaughter. And they're probably considering, like, one of... Okay, so they pick the SF here. Oh. Don't go for the Slaughter. Really and maybe that's actually pick. quite clever, because they've already given away the Doom. And if CIS, CIS Rejects want to start with Doom Slaughter, that actually puts them in a kind of obscure position where either it's a four-position Doom, or it's a one position doom, or it's a one position slaughter, and none of those are like, it, it's not optimal information you want to give away early on in the draft. So yeah, CIS yeah, Rejects don't pick the slaughter team. either. Go for the Lich Doom lane, which is a very powerful lane. But I think intelligent by Team Liquid to go for that, that Queen of Pain early on, not bother with the slaughter, they might not even want it. They know they don't need to worry about CIS Rejects picking it up so early. And by the way, was it, yeah, I think I cast this with you. Kuro was playing the support Radiant quap, right? Twice yes. in a row. I was gonna say, I am not sure that this is... Normally, uh, most teams I would say, hey, offlane quap. Not sure here, because we've seen Kuro to support Queen of Pains. Really unconventional drafts. I loved it. It worked, Ten right? One of the games, um, it fared a lot worse than the other, but it felt like one of the games, right? Two she comes off the bat, she gets first blood. Bat. She gets, like, second and third blood. She's, like, 6-0, oh, 10 minutes in as a support co-op, had an AGS, 20 minutes, it was great. Yeah, everyone's trying it right now, because originally Alliance and Empire were doing it, and then we saw Liquid doing it, and yesterday actually CIS Rejects, I saw always want to fly support co-op, so it seems like something that everyone wants to give Five a go, and remaining. I definitely don't think that CIS Rejects will, will be shocked if it is a support co-op, having done it themselves yesterday, so time. it's not going to throw them that curveball that it has to, to some teams recently. Yeah, I also think it's a really... Team nice Turn time to try game. things. How do I say this right? I mean, you're Radiant in group stages game. again, because just so folks know, this is... Stallada had kind of two group stages. Um, you're in the group stages again. You have a bit of flexibility in what you do. And I think trying things out here, uh, always a great place to do it. Because Liquid, I mean, they haven't won or lost any games in their group. Albeit their group is... Both groups are terrifying because there were qualifiers before this, but I think if you want to try it out, do it now, get it down, get it in place where, you know, you're comfortable with it, even if the patch changes things up a little bit, so. Either way, yes. Gyrocopter. 
Oh, you were saying? It's also that, that's, well, I, before we go to Gyrocopter, that's actually part of it. Pre-patch, I, I think teams usually do this. They're like, soon before a new patch, they start doing some experimentation, so that the, the testing for the new patch essentially starts before the patch even comes out. And it seems a bit weird, because you don't know the patch notes, but usually that's what we see, that heroes that become remain. big into a new patch, there were was, there was suggestions of them being tried out right before Five that. But happy to go back to the, to the draft now, and... Gyrocopter being the pickup again from a Timberman. It feels like this is the, exactly. the only hero I ever see him play these days. Yeah, um, while... I feel like he was famous for Ember Spirit, and that's dropped off the radar, especially strange considering that Ember, I think, is very strong right now. Well, I like the Venge pick by Team Liquid. I, I, I like the idea, firstly, that they can use it defensively to protect their Shadow Fiend, which means that it's going to be very difficult for Shadow Fiend to go down. But secondly, Swap someone out, Team Dazzle Liquid can't save them because to Dazzle's bad. too far away from them because Dazzle can't be standing right at the front of the fight. So Venge could do a lot of work in this game while Haskell actually, the pick for CI's rejects probably for Ramsey's in that safe lane and... Wow, what do we... I mean, Queen of Pain ulti can do well against Haskell. There's physical Team damage from the Shadow Fiend. and uh, Vengeful Spirit gives that extra physical damage. I, Five, I guess it's just the Haskell dazzle lich combo, right? It's, it's not really about... People don't pick Haskell only because there's like, oh, nothing to deal with Haskell. It's just like... This is a hero we like to play, it's a strong hero, we've got good support package for it, and let's see how it goes. Yeah, on the other hand, it is something where, I, I do agree, they picked the Huskar into a rough spot. The Quap pure damage, it's always something where uh, you have to use it at the very end of the Huskar's life, otherwise you're going to be in a spot of trouble, right? You just maybe buff him up a bit more. And if Kuro doesn't have a great start, might not get as much damage output as he wants on that Quap, since of course if it is a support Quap, going to be underleveled. We still don't know. It still could just be mind control quap. Although I don't believe he has a bunch of games on that. But the Huskar, it's something where it's really easy for you to overrun your opponents. If you just get off a few good team fights, the gyrocopter quite ne never quite makes it. The magic damage isn't so good against Huskar's Berserker Radiant Blood, which of course gives back. magic resistance. So The thing I don't really like that much about CS Rejects Draft is that I feel like after the Haskar pick, which often happens, they, they've sort of made their draft about Haskar. And I was going to complain that Dazzle Lich as a support combo doesn't a a allow that many proactive options for them to make plays. And I was wondering, you know, what are the cores they're going to pick for Dazzle and Lich to support to, to do those proactive things, to, to create those threats? And when you pick a hero like Haskar, it kind of centers the attention all around Haskar. And I feel like Team Liquid is an experienced enough team to... To come up with a plan to not fight sloppily into the Haskar, deal with the Haskar, Five and I, I don't honestly, it feel I don't know what CS Rejects last pick is going to be, but at the moment from CS Rejects draft, it looks like if you contain Haskar, that's it. That's okay, sure, they're still going to pick an Iceberg Oof. hero, but that's it. That's another way to deal with Haskar potentially. And we don't know know at all which of these is support, right? Because we've seen out of Liquid support bat and support quap. So I'm just sitting here going, I don't know who you've got, but you have a lot of team fight control, as you mentioned, for the Huskar. They've got, uh, of course, the Venge stun. They've got Gyrocopter has a bunch of slows, uh, or that stun. Queen of Pain, of course, has a slow. So this Huskar, he doesn't actually have really big range, even though he is a ranged hero. Um, so remaining. he can be kited around. And of course, if Batrider grabs him, you pick off the Huskar at the beginning Five of the fight. CIS rejects, I mean, they're going to probably pick another core hero here, but it just might not cut it. Yeah, they're also lacking stuns at the moment. Um, sure, they've got like m potential mini stuns from three of the heroes, but no actual lockdown. And that's why I f that's part of why I felt like CS Rejects' plan is just to play around the Haskar and hope he gets out of control. But getting swapped away or pulled away by a bat and then just burst on seems like a possibility to me right now. So I think CS Rejects might want to consider just having like a completely separate hero that's important for, for Liquid to deal with right now. I think it's, it's Haskell and Doom are not going to be the cores that do it on their own, and this needs to be a core that sort of re-centers their draft a bit. Yeah, it's also something where I'm not 100% sure what the lanes will be here. Obviously, offlane Doom, I think, is the most common, but we have seen Doom, I think, in all different positions. An Invoker. I have to say I like yeah. that. That re-centers the draft quite substantially, I would say. Invoker is going to be the the playmaker, the the pace setter, almost certainly for his team now. So um, I have not, I believe, seen Iceberg on Invoker. I mean, it's something that I feel like all mid specialists they know how to play this guy, but it'll be interesting. I do feel like just because they do have the team fight disadvantage, this will be Quas Wex. I would love to see Exort though, right? I mean, I think Exort's more exciting for everyone. More difficult for me to get all the kills on the camera, but excitement. <laughs> yeah, 
I, I mean, it's it's more exciting, especially in a game like this where there's not really setups for the sun strikes. So yeah. if he's hitting them, it's it really is just skill shots. Um, but I, I think I agree with you. I think it makes more sense to see a Quaswex here. And Quaswex is seconds, by man. far the dominant Invoker build in yeah. general in professional Dota right now. I think the only time we've seen Exhort recently is with the Tusk or the Spirit Breaker setup, which of course makes it easy to hit those sun strikes. But let's get into it, folks. I'm going to introduce Liquid this time. Just in case you folks don't know who's on there. I know you, you probably all do, but we'll do it anyway. Prepare we got Mind Control battle. on the Batman Bat Rider with a funky funky mount. I like that. Kuro is going to be on the Queen of Pain, so it is going to be that support co-op. Either way, um, excited to see what they output here. We've got Farta on the Shadow Fiend, Jerax on that Venge, and finally Matomba Man, as you said, on that Gyrocopter, the only hero we get to see him play. Yep, and on the opposing side, going to the off lane is Afterlife on the Doom this time. Going to the mid lane, Iceberg on his Invoker. We're going to see Goblack probably running the dual lane on Lich with the Doombringer. And on the on the safe lane, they'll have Dazzle, played by Always Wanna Fly, and Ramses played playing the Huskar. And speaking of Dazzle, he is in a little bit of the danger zone. He's going to take a stun, but the rest of the team isn't quite here. The Shadow Fiend does not, hasn't skilled yet. So we won't know what he's going. But always want to fly. He may as well just go back to base. He actually just eats a tree. Really surprised he didn't just hop on down to uh, just walk back to Fountain. But probably wanting to be strong for the rune contesting that's going to be coming up soon. That's uh, okay. He can heal himself up. It doesn't take that much. I mean, I, th I think he, I don't think he goes to Fountain. I think he just goes to block. Maybe I'm wrong. Because usually Dazzle's heal takes very little mana and actually heals quite a lot of value early on. The battle begins. Yeah, yes, when you are very low health, oh. always doing a lot of work. And he actually, yeah, he goes for the block. Goes, I think that was meant the, the Arteezy block, as it's known. So Dazzle's going to be blocking up there. Lich ate a creep in the top lane. And this is something where we hadn't touched on it at all yet, but Lich is always a real pain to play into. He really knows the farm your team's able to get. Level two, uh, two points in sacrifice is losing almost a fourth of your farm on that gyrocopter. It's going to be rough. And Afterlife has been spotted in the jungle, so he might be forced out before he can eat a creep. Yeah, my concern is that, again, there's there's a potential limitation on utility coming out of the side of CS Rejects, just like last game. Which is that uh, Lich, yes, does a lot in the lane stage. After the lane stage, it gives people armor and sometimes does damage and slows things. But it doesn't, like, lock down, control... Certainly hardly ever dictates you know, the positioning for a fight, or... So it's a hero that actually gets punished, I think, quite a lot um, by various things. It, it's just not that versatile in terms of moving around the map, reacting to what's going on. Yep, always want to fly taking a lot of harassment from Kuro. That Shadow Strike does work, and oh goodness, Kuro, he might be able to get him low. There's going to be a heal coming out. It's going to be enough, and another tick not going to bring him down, so... And he just told them roughly where the ward is, I think. With that final hit, always want to fly has got to know that there was a ward showing. Yeah, that's another thing we actually see. I I'm kind of surprised Kuro went for it then, just because as we've talked about, it makes it really that that area is really hard to go in on. But oh, we have an engagement. There are four napalm stacks. I think Ramsey just has to try and stand here and fight. But of course, that's going to be a bat rider who can just get away. And Ramsey's he may be our first blood. He's taking quite a bit of damage from that shadow strike, but he should be able to stick up if he's in danger. And I I don't know. Oh goodness, this is the Dazzle that could. So nobody's gonna go down. Quite a few people getting really low though. Yeah, Mind Control used pretty much all of his mana though, so unless he wants to eat through that mango, he's gonna probably start losing out on the farm for a while. And I have to say, this Invoker's actually doing a lot better in CS than I expected. The dominance from the SF may come out in a little bit, but it's something where Invoker, the Quas Wax Invoker, really loses lanes. I mean, he's... You've got very little damage, you can see here. You just have a rough time lost hitting because you don't have something easy like souls, and he's getting a lot of denies. Like, Iceberg's playing really well, I have to say. Yeah, the, the difference is not that big before the Shadow Fiend's got souls, but once the Shadow Fiend starts getting souls, it becomes almost impossible for Invoker to out us. So, you're right, I think it's, it's quite impressive. Yeah, just because Shadow Fiend does have a, a couple of old soulies on him, uh, not quite sure how that works. He just, he just steals their souls. Because he's a fiend. Either way, let's take a look up at top. Matomba Man, he's lost hitting okay. It does look like everybody in this game, though, having a bit of a rough time. And as I say that, we got a shallow grave coming up at Ramsey's. This is going to be our first blood. He's trying to pound into them. Can he get second blood as well? Mind control is going to go down. Can he get the auto attacks on Kuro? But he blinks away. I actually think if Ramsey's had turned there, I mean, albeit he had five stacks of napalm, not that easy to change your target. He could have maybe also gotten the after-death kill on Kuro. 
So this is one of those annoying things about laning against Dazzle and Huskar. Like, there's basically never a time where you kill Huskar without him killing you. Yeah. It just, it's just not going to happen because he's going to get that many Burning Spears on you. I think though that Liquid are probably happy with that trade. Yeah. Because if they keep the Huskar's farm down, that's a big problem for CS Rejects. And he gets no experience for those kills as well. That's one of the issues with Huska. If you want to make sure you get the experience for the kill, that you get it before you die, you sometimes have to hit a person who would have otherwise been dead. And I think that's why Ramsey's continued to go on to mind control, because he really would prefer getting the experience being the secondary death. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, they're going to continue to just trade blues in this lane, but actually it, it just seems like a lot of people are falling behind on farm now. Shadowfiend's starting to pull away. As we expected him to do, Jarakop is starting to pull away, and CIS rejects are are not actually keeping up. Although there's there's actually going to be a chase down with the Scorched Earth and Ultimate Timberman, maybe no, I, no. I think he just decided it wasn't uh Radiant wasn't happening. It was it was coming off cooldown as well, so or it was wearing out, is the word I wanted. So we're not seeing too much action. I have to say both of these games, considering it's CIS uh, Dota, I was expecting a little bit more excitement in both sets, but. Not too much, and we have a lot of posturing, as you said, a lot of people getting low. This health goes back up to six, seven sticky napalm stacks. I feel like when you get that many stacks on you, you just need to back up and chill a little bit. He seems to be making a deliberate point of, of like, baiting. That's what I feel like, there's this, there's a subtle, like, interchange of, uh, aggression where Husko's kind of saying, okay, I dare you, go on me, I'm gonna kill you, you you're not gonna kill me. And that's why I think every now and then he gets the stacks but doesn't go back. Almost as if, yeah, as, as if he, he he wants the bat to go on him. Yeah. Now, because of how hectic both of these lanes are, it does mean that we're seeing a lot less stacks in the jungle than I would necessarily expect. Venge isn't having a great opportunity to go and give those for SF. Now, he can do it himself on Dyer, but it is really hard. So uh, we're not going to be seeing maybe the flash farm out of Farta that we're used to from an SF. But has got a haste in his bottle, which makes me think he might try kill Iceberg soon. And actually, I think Goblax thought the same thing because he's head over to that mid lane. Can Goblax sure do enough much. though? I mean, he he's a lich. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That's all we've talked about. But they're actually gonna go for the kill on Fada. I well, Goblax coming around, but through the haste rune just seems impossible. Yeah, Unless they you tornado do. off the haste. Okay, he's got the cold snap coming out. As you said, they can tornado off the haste. Oh, he's not going to hit it at all, though. <laughs> kind of 90 degree angle now. Iceberg slowed a little bit, and with that haste rune, they could think about coming back in, but they're going to do the safe play. As I see Doom falling in the top lane, they run him down. And that, that'll be that. So a little yep. bit of a missed gank in mid, but I, I really think that's just uh, lich things. You're not exactly... Oh! Kuro steals the rune, always wanna fly, has to TP out. That's rough. If I mean if Iceberg had hit the tornado, that's probably a kill on Fatso, so it's worth going for the kill, but once they don't take off the haste, there's not really much of a chance and they pay for it elsewhere on the map. Yeah. Either way, we're starting to see that Liquid is pulling ahead a little bit, albeit, you know, this is within a thousand gold. We're six minutes in. It's anybody's game. Just wanna stress that. But, of course, we are seeing that Liquid has a few heroes on the top of the net worth. Do you think this is a Midas Invoker game? He's, of course, got the workings of an urn. Um, I I don't think it would be bad to get the Midas, but it does feel like if he can get up that Orchid, of course, there are a lot of easy pickoffs. Although, I have to imagine Liquid will anticipate that as well if they see the Orchid come up and then kind of group up, play in pairs. Yeah, I'm not too sure. There's also even potential for the Yules, although I, I, I think it probably depends on finish the urn make some players, see how the game goes. How quickly do you get charges, how quickly do you get gold, and then you decide from there what you're gonna buy. And as you mentioned last game, we're seeing this a lot more out of players. It really used to be something where, I mean, everybody was going Sanja Nyasha, everybody was going back on Shadow Fiend. it was very obvious, they'd build it up in parts, um, you know, you see the headdress, then the buckler, etc. A lot of these players waiting, and as you said, it might be waiting to see how the game goes, it might just be waiting to... Uh, see if you can buy it all at once. We have an initiation down bottom, but they don't know Terax is here and the shallow grave It's ready on always want to fly, but he has to be very careful with it He actually already has thrown it out and now Ramses gets to do a lot of damage. There should also be a tornado. It's way too short Ramses is gonna be alive for one of the kills not gonna be able to get Yeah, he doesn't get credit for the second. Oh, no, he does dazzle technically gets credit for one of those so uh again Huskar though. I mean this is just classic Huskar. You think you can fight you can't there's a, I mean, there was a tough decision there, right? Yerax's uh, Vengeful Spirit had to decide to stun the Huskar or the Dazzle. 
He tried to stun the Dazzle to avoid the Grave going off, the Grave went off anyway, and immediately, I'm sure he regretted his decision, because if he stuns Huskar, even though Grave keeps him up, Huskar can't kill people, but in the meantime, Doombring in the top lane actually taken very low by Kuro. Yeah, he needs... Be fine. No, I, I, I don't think so. This, oh. There'll be this next tick. He needs someone to deny him. There we go. Oh, and they actually try to use the Howl. So, uh, isn't able yeah, to quite he, get the Howl. But he still had a, a magic stick to use. No. And not. Yeah, and his tranquils were not up, so it's, it's just doom things. Uh, I spoke actually taking a lot of damage in the mid lane as Fodder says I have an in, uh, illusion rune. He's, I mean, they have, yeah, they have the glyph. They should be able to hold this, but it's hard. I spoke may have to use some spells to zone out the SF. He manages to hit the tornado. He has a cold snap coming out, but he has to be careful. Fodder may turn around and raise. No, he's getting stunned up too much. Always want to fly coming out. There's going to be an EMP. It'll do good damage, but now they need the heal. The urn, it's going to tick down on Fodder, but not enough. He lives with 22 health, and now there's a lot of heroes in mid, although there should be the sustain. Um, They do hold the tower, though. I think you'd kind of hope it gets into deny range, but again, if you can keep your mid tower up, that's a lot of map control. Yeah, they also they also got Metabomen to make rotation and use a whole lot of his mana, and that's going to put his farm back, so I think that's very good, because it was only supports that came to the mid lane for CIS Rejects, and it's oh. actually the... We have a dunk on bottom, and then immediately the lasso. Not exactly what I think he was going to dunk into, but this still should be a lot of damage output. Not enough to kill the Batman, so going to be fine. Not a lane that Batrider wants to farm in anymore. I think no. I wouldn't be that surprised if Mind Control wanted to move into the jungle now, but problem is Shadow Fiend's there already. So I don't know actually where we're gonna see the Blink Tiger finish. It's actually gonna be an urn first for the Batrider, but how he's gonna get Blink in this game might actually be a bit of an issue, I think, because it's it's really difficult to get uh, lane farm. So does he move into the enemy jungle, try to farm there? I, I'm not sure. Doom again off to life in a lot of trouble. A lot of heroes here. A tornado does come out as, long, as well as an EMP. Kuro gonna have no mana to blink away. They have to get some auto attacks or a Lich Blast will finish him off. What was that swap? Like 500 units, but it doesn't matter. It's gonna lead them all to their death. And Doom, he's gonna be fine. Scorched Earth doing work. So again, a team fight that doesn't go their way. And if they can find mind control on this bottom lane, he does have three spears on him. They need to add a couple more. But Ramsey's getting very low. He is omelet toggling already. And he may go down as... Oh, they got the immediate shallow grave. They Go for the dunk onto Matoba, man. Ramsey's like, if I'm going down, I'm bringing you with me. And he might not even die. He has to arm the toggle very carefully. He isn't able to. And now Dazzle, he is the one who's going to be in trouble. Always want to fly. He does have a heal. And Kuro not going for more. So we missed the first bit of that fight recap, but we got the second. Definitely fantastic for CIS in that first one. I mean, they kind of got away with Moto. Well, it was just a really good uh, EMP from Iceberg. Nobody on it. There were like three liquid heroes that just had no mana after it. And then it's like panic stations. Yeah. Um, it's what, it's probably one of the invoker skills that like irritates professional players the most. If I had to guess, like when people are like ban invoker, they're thinking about the EMP. They're like, I don't want to deal with that. Well, in the meantime, I always want to fly without any mana. It's yeah. being caught by the Batrider. Kuro is here, but there's also a Huskar incoming. He manages to get off that shallow grave. Will this buy enough time? He even manages to pop the minus armor. The weave is sticking on people. And if he gets... This is, this is actually getting away with Moto. He does not have a TP, but he will have enough one charges to throw out a heal. And he's thinking about helping his team go in for more. At the same time, just going to have a quick look at Liquid's wards. Yeah, we got we got some deep action. They want to make something happen in bottom, but I don't think it's the lane you go for. Like you mentioned before, I don't think you actually rotate anyone to farm where the Huska is. I think you unfortunately... You have to ignore him a little, because he doesn't farm creeps fantastically, and as I say, this Sparta taking a lot of damage on top, they even expend the Doom, but there's so many heroes TPing in, can Invoker control all of the folks coming in, there's gonna be a, a ult dropped by the Lich, they finally managed to kill off Fodder, but Gyrocopter gets the kill on the Lich in return, and now Matamba Man, he is going down, there's gonna be a Tornado to kill him off, Kuro does have Blink up, 15 second cooldown though, they might be able to catch up to her, and Invoker, he is hunting, I don't think he's quite fast enough, so I think that should be the end of that. That's a dream come true for a Lich though, a yeah. position where Chain Frost actually bounces a lot early on in the game. And he got Usually creeps. you can't guarantee those. I mean, sorry, I meant to say he got like farm and heroes, it was great. <laughs> yeah, no it's, I mean, because we talked about limitations on the hero, but sometimes you just have these fights where the hero looks just fantastic and it's contribute. It's pulling its weight completely, it's not just about winning lanes if the Chain Frost is bouncing up and down in a fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, knowing that this Firefly is down, I think you're going to see a dunk coming out. I mean, it seems like ideal time to go for it if they get vision. There's going to be a weave thrown out as well, so the Huskar can feel very comfortable, not quite wanting to go into the fire just yet. 
Although, if Batrider keeps playing up so aggressively, I have to expect he'll be taking a dunk. And they do keep coming down bottom for Liquid. I think it's a really hard ask of them to do anything about this Huskar yet. I think uh, Liquid are in big trouble, to be honest. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that, well, is that's not gonna go down again. Yeah, it looks is. like he is. There's gonna be a tornado. He may, you know, there's no TP support. He's just gonna puff. And that, as you said, looking like Liquid's. I mean, albeit last game, they were definitely behind a little bit at some points. They made it up with team fights. We're gonna have the initiation. Huskar is being pulled back. Dazzle is nearby, though. He has to be very careful out this shallow grave timing. He pops it out as the sonic wave comes out. And now Ramsey, he is ready to rip on through them. He's gonna fall, though. He's omelet toggling. He can't turn around. He's going down. The invoker is here, though, and Iceberg. He has a tornado. Isn't gonna hit onto anyone. I think that should be the end of the initiation. But uh, once yes. again, they managed to pick one off when it was kind of, you know, I think that was a 4v2 for most of that initiation. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, what I was going to say, Liquid are looking in trouble here. Batrider is taking a long time, but under farmed, so is Gyrocopter. They both need to catch up. There's not enough space for all three of these heroes to catch up in their jungle. The one good thing for Liquid is that we've seen this dynamic over and over recently, that they... they, they don't do well in the early fights, and they somehow managed to win games anyway, so... On that basis, I'd say maybe they're not actually out of their comfort zone yet, because they're kind of used to playing from behind. Yeah, it, it really is interesting. Uh, we've talked about it on previous calls, but it feels like Liquid, they were clearly a top four in Europe contender, and then maybe just because they haven't been having as many professional matches since there was kind of that lull. Uh, around the mages, and we have an invis on Jerax. This could be really big, but it has to be used properly on Iceberg. Iceberg's in a lot of trouble, I think, actually. He might just be swapped into a lasso. Oh gosh, I think maybe a little bit of a miscommunication coming out there, and it's gonna allow Iceberg to get away. The Lich Ult is bouncing mind control. A little bit more damage. They don't manage to pop an own charge on him, and this Lich Ult, maybe not as good as the last, but Kuro, he blinks in aggressively. That is a 15 second cooldown on level one blink, and he just goes to his death. The bat rider's ulti wasn't ready yet when Ben swapped, and I think the conversation is they wait for the bat ulti, but they couldn't. They thought Invoker would go back, and Ben just just like, oh, I gotta go now, but it doesn't work out. I mean, in that situation, you just gotta accept you missed the window, unfortunately. Yeah. And Afterlife, he is stalking up top. I imagine he might pop out of these trees when he gets vision with this ward that he can go for an easy doom. He's also gone for the early Vlads, which I have to say is something I like. But if he goes for this, there's going to be TP support coming out of the Venge, and that can really hamper what you can do. We're going to be seeing he pops the drums, he pops the Scorch Dots. He has to get quite a bit of damage on here. Venge, I'm imagining she'll do a saving swap. And there's a stun. Matumba Man, I don't think he even ticks down to this. So, poor Doom. Needed to get out that level death or something. And we also have Invoker. Oh no, Iceberg. He's going for the snipe. I'm not sure if he was spotted. No, he gets it. Oh I no, he doesn't. Well, he doesn't go for it. This is going to be the TP. There's the cold snap. Two more auto attacks should do this. Yeah, with the... With the uh, he doesn't have a TP though. Oh goodness, he's gonna just ghost. ghost walk away. He goes for another kill onto Jerax. He has to be careful with what he invokes. And we got a Doom up here. Oh goodness. They need some TP support or something. There's gonna be a Sonic Wave and Iceberg. Oh, he manages to go down, but now Afterlife, he also doesn't have Scorched Earth up, so I have to imagine he'll fall. I think a pretty ambitious play coming out from CIS Rejects, unfortunately, again. And this is where it went wrong for them last time. They lost a big streak on Iceberg. And they lost a lot. At this, on this case, though, they are exchanging for a tier two tower down bottom. Yeah, even so, I I tend to agree. It's maybe a bad sign for them when they lose that big streak on Iceberg. It's it's a really good play to recognize. Hey, we can make this extra kill and still get out. But it's contingent on there not being further reinforcements for Liquid. And one thing that Liquid have shown very clearly to me, even when they're losing these fights, is their players always get there. Always. They they've taken a page out of the book from C deck and. They basically always, always all have TPs, and if a fight breaks out and it lasts long, they'll all get there, for sure. Yeah, it felt like a lot of the problem there really just being that Iceberg didn't have a TP. He Radiant had no way of getting out Radiant of that engagement, top. and a TP would have probably been the easy task, uh, or the easy way out, so... But, either way, we're gonna be seeing his Orchid is finished, has been for a little bit. He's now building into what I'm gonna guess is a BKB. Um... Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, he could go for the Aghanim Scepter, there's the only other real option, but probably a BKB, and he's actually gonna find Fodder here. Now, Fodder, he is taking quite a bit of damage, there's also gonna be an EMP. Again, no TP rotations, I think they keep sacking Fodder in exchange for other objectives, and... I'm not sure if it's wrong, just because I'm not... 
I mean, they might have thought there was too much backup being nearby since they were taking this mid tower, but Fodder's having a really rough time. I mean, he's a Shadow Fiend who keeps kind of catching up and then they kill him, and catching up and they kill him, and this is them going for Roshan, everybody knows, on Liquid. Yeah, there wasn't really, I mean, someone could have TP to Fodder, I, I, I think they wouldn't have saved him anyway, to be honest. Well, there's gonna be a play here by Mind Control, trying to delay, I don't know if he's gonna try steal. Uh, while you say there might be a play for mind control, we have Venge just being easily picked off, and if they're not careful, there will be more. He's gonna go for the steal, he doesn't manage to get it, and this should just be mind control, giving up his life, but he has gotten the Huskull stuck on the high ground. Maybe not where he wants to be, and Gold Black is very low. If Kuro could find an angle, that Sonic Wave has a big ol' range, and oh, he's thinking about it. But unfortunately, I think he needs to leave. And they don't have vision of Kuro. They're trying to go in for that doom. Kuro has to wait four more seconds. Oh no, he's revealed his location. Goodbye, Kuroki. So, um... Did you see how the house got down? He, he yeah, just he ulted dunked. onto the ancients? Yeah, <laughs> it was a bit... It was a bit... I, I wasn't expecting that. I honestly thought he'd have to TP out, which of course causes problems since he hasn't finished his treads, so doesn't have the slot. Yeah, um, and CIS rejects looking really dominant this game. I, I still do think it's something we saw this type of lead for them. They whiffed on one team fight and then Liquid took their racks, making the game a lot easier, but I mean... I think this is a clear case of Liquid is being Husk God. Yeah, it's it's CI's Rejects game to throw it at this point. If they don't throw it, they should definitely win it, I think. But they, they're capable of throwing. It could happen. So, Ramses, he can play really far up, but of course you don't want to burn that Aegis and respawn in a horrible place. I feel like Liquid, they have to get something huge out of mind control. He has picked up the Blink Dagger, will be able to blink around, maybe get something, and they also have Jerex with that swap. It's still only level 1 though, which is really rough, it's really short. They get the deny, well played Jerex, but they're gonna eat an EMP Tornado, Deafening Blast as well. Jerex may just go down to one more auto attack, they have the Requiem of Souls on the sidelines, but it didn't hit the Invoker soon enough to get the minus damage debuff to save. Jerax's life and now they're looking in a pretty good spot to go for that tower. I'm actually surprised he hasn't oh, alacrity up Ramses just because it would add a lot of attack speed uh, up his damage but deciding he would rather have the other spells up and they melee rax and out and I have to say that's a lot more disciplined from CIS rejects. Yeah, it's a good sign. I think the yeah, lack of alacrity is just because he used all three he used uh, EMP tornado and deafening blast to make the kill and you always gotta have cold snap up if you're in a fight situation. Um, which is maybe one reason he could consider going for Ags, but no, he's gonna finish his BKB first. And I don't know how they actually deal with him at this point. I feel like now, this is what I was talking about in the draft. Huskar on its own might not be enough this game, if he's the only one they have to deal with. But Invoker with this BKB, all of a sudden Liquid have to like throw all their resources at Invoker and they have to throw all their resources at Huskar. Yeah. Neither of them can be handled easily and it's a, it's a huge issue because we're looking at another set of Raxes very soon. We're also seeing that we're, uh, we've are we got a 12,000, probably actually closer to 13,500 net worth lead in favor of CIS rejects. Um, something like an 8,000 experience lead. Fodder is rocking treads, half of a BKB, and an Aquila. I mean, yeah. this isn't great for Shadow Fiend. He has sub 400 DPM. A lot of this being just how the laning phase went, I really want to stress that the fact that he didn't have stacks, I think, being pretty disastrous for a Shadow Fiend. Nice. He's got BKB now at least. Yeah. And that's gonna be, I mean, if anything can make a difference to that, but I don't know if it is even enough. It might be too little too late. We do have a swap coming out. Of course, there is still gonna be that Aegis up on the Huskar. If they can pull him deep and burn those lives deep in the base, it might be something. Fodder does pop that Invis rune. They picked off the Venge already, and it's looking like, oh, the Huskar, he is ready to do a lot of damage. The Requiem of Souls cancelled by the Lich Hulk. But now with the BKB, they have nothing else. But at the same time, Fodder okay. has nothing else. And as you said, it might be game. We do have a buyback coming out of Gyrocopter. And Huska, he's dead pretty deep at the same... And they haven't taken down the Tier 3. So they have to turn around and get this on CIS Rejects. But they've already won the first part of the fight. And it should just be a matter of time. Mind Control going in. But he doesn't have ult or anything. And they're dunking Madamba Man. This is GG. Kuro drops that ult. And we're going to be headed into a Game 3, folks. A pretty... Uh, I, I I really just have to say, oh, Mind Control actually gets a couple kills. Probably people typing GG and stuff, though. I have to say, I feel like this was just a case of the Huskar getting out of control. I mean, I, I to an extent I agree, but I actually think Iceberg's the one doing most of the work this game, and that's what impresses me, because I feel like Huskar on its own would not have gotten out of control this game. There's the option to, you know, pull it back with a bat, swap it back, isolate and kill it. But in this situation, it was actually Invoker and Huskar both out of control, and you don't, I mean, you, you just can't handle two out of control heroes. Yeah. 
at, at that level of out of controlness this yeah. early in the game. And as you point out, Invoca, 11 and 1. Okay. So either way, yeah. folks, thank you so much for watching. I've been joined by Scant. He goes by Scantzel on the Twitter. Please check him out. Show him some love. I've got his handle up on the screen. I'm Llama Down Under. You can also find me on Twitter at Llama Down Under. I would love any and all feedback on how to get better. I'm sure Scant would too, so please hit us up with that. And once again, thank you so much for watching Star Ladder. We'll get you into that game through right quick after a few words from the Star Ladder sponsors. So peace out.